Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to talk to you about the workflow between Blender, Substance Painter and DAS Studio. And I'm making this video because I didn't quite have something cohesive like this. This is essentially made for one of my supporters, WebSoul. Hello, WebSoul. He is starting to make his own props inside Blender. He wants to texture them in Substance Painter and then bring them over into DAS Studio. And there's a problem in the way Substance Painter handles these exported textures. If you have an object that has multiple material zones. So here's the problem and then following is the solution of the easiest workaround that requires no additional tools. So I've made myself a really really simple object here that has three material zones here, a rim at the top, an inside which is red and the outside which is blue. And all of these are UV mapped so that they're on the same UV tile. So it doesn't have UDIMs, it's just one tile and all these things are on the same texture set. So as such, I want to end up with one texture set that has different material zones in different parts uh, that I'm going to create in Substance Painter. So the logical way to approach this is to say, well, first of all, I'm going to select my simple box here and then I head over to File, Export, OBJ. I suppose this one here. There's also a legacy one. We're using this one. And then with the selected object here, this these are the defaults here. The, by default, the materials here are being exported. And I've already done it. I'm going to call it simple box. And that is the object I could go and import into Substance Painter. And then I would end up with something like this. In fact, let me just go and create this thing from scratch. File new. And then I'll go over here and say file, select my simple box. This is the one I have prophylactically intentionally exported there hit import I'm going to leave everything else as it is for now because we're not really worrying about that I'm not going to save this and then I'll end up with something like this now you'll see that on the right hand side here under texture set list Substance Painter shows me my material zones, so inside, outside, and the rim, each of which has a paint layer. And if I head over to my asset library, I can go and drag something over to any of these zones, and my material will be applied to that material zone. So this is on the outside here. And maybe fabric rough can be on the inside, something like that. And then maybe we'll have, have whatever, the ground gravel on the rim here. So this is how convenient it looks to work with Substance Painter. And the cool thing now is on my layer stacks, I have a different layer stack for each of the material zones, which is kind of what I want. If this, if I want to remove this, or if this is getting really, really complicated, then, you know, everything is neatly arranged per material zone. So outside has a different one and the inside has a different one. So depending on how complicated my layer stack is, this is really cool. But the problem is, and this has been known since like 2018, the problem is if I go and export my texture sets out, Substance Painter is going to create a whole new set per material zone. So say on average I'm ending up with five or six maps per material zone. In this case, I'm ending up with 18 different files. And this is, of course, not at all what I want. I want one texture set for all the materials. But there's currently no way inside Substance Painter to deal with this. And Adobe and before them Algorithmic, they have known about this problem, that this is on many users' wish list. Okay, can't we just combine all textures onto one set on export? And they just flatly just ignore that and say, no, 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 that's not how you're supposed to work. You just have to find a way around it and get on with it. And that's a problem. So this is what we're faced with. They're not fixing it. So we have to find a way around it. And there are two options that we have. The first one is that we can live with those all those files and then use an external tool like the texture set combiner to do that step afterwards manually. Or we can employ a different workflow going into Substance Painter, namely one that doesn't have material zones. Uh, but we still want to be able to make these selections here. And there's two options that we have. So first of all, let's go and export our object again from Blender, but don't do it with material zones. So the way to do that is to head over to Export OBJ, and then the defaults would include this box here that says with materials, at which point all my material zones will be exported. And in my case, I'm going to untick that and export it again as something called simple box, no mats. So that leaves me with two OBJ files, one that comes with an MTL file, the other one does not. This one here is the one that I've exported earlier. That's the one that has material zones. This one does not. So I'll cancel out of that. And then in Substance Painter, I'll go and do this again. 
file new, and then I'll go and import the one without the mats, like the no mats file. Hit open. Once again, I'll leave everything else as it is. I'll say discard, and I'll end up with the same box. But lo and behold, under the texture set list, I only have one single default material that is now on here. So the problem is now that if I go and I'll just remove this paint layer here, if I go and apply my material like fabric rough, this will now appear everywhere on my object. And there's currently no way for me to select uh, while just use the inside or just use the outside because Substance Painter doesn't know the description of the material zones. So you have two options. You can either on simple objects not worry and select these portions manually with something called the polygon fill tool. I have another more concise video about that, but the way to work with that would be to uh, create a mask for this layer, like a black mask that disables everything. And then I can use this little tool here on the side, that's the polygon fill tool. And it lets me now select either polygons of my object and say, well, you know, I'm going to recreate my inside, you know, of this material. Let's say this is the inside and this is what I want it to look like. That's, that's all of them selected. I can do that or I can use different tools here that will select larger parts of the figure, like a whole UV chunk fill. I've explained that in my previous video. So it kind of depends if your object is simple enough that you can live with that. So because then you can go and uh, grab another material, let's say uh, let's see, my favorite aluminum insulator here, I'll drag that one up there. And maybe I want it for that to be just on the outside. I'll go back to layers and I'll go and uh, create myself another black mask here. And then with my polygon fill tool, I can now go and just select the outside. And so this is how it could work. And I don't have to do, I don't have to use anything else. I can just go ahead and essentially recreate my material zones that way. So the downside is I now have one layer stack and nothing is separated anymore. And as you know, with Substance Painter, this can get complicated very fast. So make good use of these groups here. If you have a large stack, just chuck them into a group and, uh, and apply it that way. So that's one option. But the other one is that you use an ID map for the selection. So if your object is complex and this is not a suitable workflow, you can go ahead and do something like I've done here and assign a color value to each of your material zones. So in Blender, this is something that you do on the surface tab here, just on the base color value. You can do it from here. You don't have to do it on the shading tab, but each of these has a different hue essentially in the base color. And that's important. I'm sure there's scripts that allow you to do this randomly. I've done this manually. There's a script inside Das Studio that allows you to assign material zones randomly also. But if you do this and export this with these hue values out as the version with materials, you can now go ahead and go and just delete that. Uh, use your nomads version of the object here and then head over into edit bake mesh maps, which is a process you have to do anyway so that you get all these maps baked so that Substance Painter can, you know, create materials better. This is usually set to something larger. I'll leave with uh, 1024. I'll, I don't need any of these really for my demo. I'll leave them all and I'll, I'll leave them all ticked though. But here under high definition meshes, I'm going to go and select the mesh that has my materials on now. So under here, I'll just go and use the one that has materials. So this is the Nomads version. This is this one here. This is the one that has material zones. I'm going to go and use that. And over here under ID, I can choose how I'd like the ID map to be baked. So in my case, I would like Substance Painter to have a look at the actual material color. There's another way to do this with vertex colors. OBJ format doesn't actually support that, but the FBX format does. So you could use that. If you had vertex colors painted on your object, you could use that. In my case, it'll be the material color here. And that is really all I need to do. Then I head over to bake selected textures and then under the hood, Substance Painter is now going to bake things like you know, ambient inclusion maps. So this is going to be easier for it to create the materials that I'm going to drop onto this and later on when I bake them out. But what it's also doing, it's creating this ID map that I can go and look at from here under Mesh Maps ID. And then I see that all my material zones appear to be intact. So it now knows which polygons belong to which kind of hue value, the one that I had set up manually here in Blender as the base color value.
That is kind of how that works. So if I have that, I can now go and use this for selection. So once again, I have one material zone, nothing has changed there. I'm going to go and drop a material on here and it'll be once again applied to everything. But now I can go ahead and inside this layer, I can go and create another mask. And this one is a mask with color selection. And I know this is terribly, terribly complicated when you're just getting started with Substance Painter. Trust me, I've been there. It's just so, so nerve wracking. Uh, you, cl you click that, then uh, you have that black mask, but you also have a color selection option in here. And under the properties here, you can now pick a color and if you click that the id map is shown so at that point we will switch to the id map picker here and then i can say hey this material i want to just apply that to the inside perhaps and that is then how you can how you can work with this uh, and then you can do this for every other material zone so the aged ipe wood goes on the outside and once again it's first of all it's everywhere then we go into the layer and create a mask with color selection with that, we now go and pick the color, this color here, and we'll say this is going to be on the outside. And this is how we can then work. And now, well, we need one more material, I suppose, for the rim here. So let's just for completion, maybe we'll use artificial leather. If you do that and you work like this, then you'll be able to go and create on export a texture set that combines all these things on one texture tile and that is something that you can then apply on all on the whole object inside das studio and you don't have to combine your textures again i'm really sorry to tell you that it's this complicated and i personally preferred it to work with multiple material zones directly inside substance painter but it is something that you know they just don't want to implement or haven't yet maybe it's on their bucket list to do at one point uh, the current version is, I believe, 8.2.0 of Substance Painter. They haven't done it. So maybe it's something that's coming in the future, but at least now you know what Chris and I were talking about on the Discord when we say, hey, export one thing with materials, export one without materials, and then bake the one with materials onto the one that doesn't have it, and then use that as an ID map thing to select your material zones. Alternatively, you can use the polygon fill tool. That is also nice and handy. It really depends on the complexity of your objects. I hope this was helpful. Helpful, and I hope I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.